Hey, peeps. This your boy. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to make some cabbage delight. So this is a dish I made. And then I made it and I ate it and it was quite delicious. Better than what the normal cabbage I make. So we're going to take. Uh, did I not bring my knife? Oh, I did. One ingredient that I've never used in making cabbage is lettuce. So let's go into this. This is a lettuce that I have that I wanted to use the rest of it of. And so I'm this, and I used this in the other recipe, which was, uh, it turned out really well. Uh, and I did use lettuce on it, in it, which surprisingly, again, turned out really well. Um, if you've ever juiced lettuce, and I know some of you may not use uh, juicers, but I used to juice. And um, because most of the juices that you find in the grocery store are full of sugars, fall before you. They call them mean greens. Go look at the calorie intake on them. Most veggies should, uh, veggie drinks should be very, very, extremely low in calories. You look at these drinks and they are high in calories, high in sugar, high in everything you don't need to eat. And the reason is they have to make them taste good so do you buy it? But it's, they're taking away uh, the benefits of it and adding all these high fructose syrups, making it uh, uh, extra uh, sugary. And then I'm going to take a cabbage. Do whatever it is. Some people throw the outer, la la uh, outer pieces of the cabbage away. I don't, because it's still cabbage. Just wash it. You got a little old age to it, just cut it, cut it off. And I take it, and I use it also, because there's still nutrients in these lettuce. Now until we get to the nitty gritty, the cabbage itself, the core of it, which I'm going to cut up, slice up. Now you can cut your cabbage whatever way you want to cut it. It doesn't matter how you cut it or if you slice it in smaller pieces, biggest pieces, uh, it doesn't really matter, one way or the other. Uh, it's the, when you get to the center core, that's when it gets really difficult to cut. So I tend to start cutting around the core because it's just, like a block of cement. And you know you get close to, close to the core, the closer you get to this piece here. See, that's a block of cement. Could you use it? Probably. I've never invested enough time to see if I could actually cook that down to a point where it was actually usable because I've used the other parts and I can cook it and that's why it really matters to me. Again, cut it up however you like. There's no right or wrong in doing this, but the taste you're gonna get from this, it's going to kind of blow your uh, frontal lobe because it's going to have almost a natural sweet taste to it. And I know a lot of that sweetness is coming from the lettuce. Because uh, again, I said I, I juiced lettuce before. And if you even eat lettuce, it tastes more like a water-based item. But yet, if you juice it, it has a really mild sweet, sweet taste to it, which I've never really figured out why is that the case. Into, including today, still don't know. Now, what's going to happen is, as you see this Instapot, which uh, is getting quite full, yes, we're gonna use some vegetable broth in this. This is going to help allow it to cook 
And again, I will be cooking this on the steam setting. This is going to allow the cabbage to cook fairly quickly. And most of this is going, about half of this is going to shrink down into the inside of the container. But I can still put a little bit more in it because I can force it, force the top closed. So, what else are we going to use in this? You do say. Celery. Just make sure you rinse your celery off. I've already did, did that in the sink. So, you can see it's a little water. And again, you can cut the celery in whatever kind of slices, pieces, and chunks you want to because the steam is going to break the celery down to where it's going to be really, really soft. So it won't be as crunchy as you want. If you want your celery more crunchy, you may want to cook it after the cabbage is done and just put it in, then cook it for a little bit longer because the steam is like magic. It will break down pretty much anything and allow it to be more. So if you have dental issues or you just don't like to eat hard food, which is me. I don't want to suffer eating hard food. I mean, I don't really have any dental problems, but I, you know, it's like eating a steak that's hard as a concrete block. Why would you when you can eat one that's nice and tender? So, and these are the onions that I'll be talking about. I can never remember what the name of these onions are. They're, they're green peppers, uh, but I don't remember what type. I cut off the ends. Now I'm going to have to, I want to put one more thing in here before I seal the deal because I want to fill it up with more ingredients, but it's getting to the point now, it's getting so full that I'm not going to be able to put much more in it and then it's also going to give me time to do a lot of a quick cleanup. So cleaning, if you're going to work in the kitchen, the best way to, is to clean as you cook. Uh, once you're done doing the things you need to, go clean, up after, go clean up after yourself because now that would make life so much easier. You don't have this huge mess you have to clean up at the end. You can just go ahead and clean as you go. Clean up, you have to cut up lettuce and stuff, whatever you're cutting up, dice it up, clean the bowl, clean the pot, put it in the dishwasher if that's where you're putting it. But just clean it up and that makes sense. The cleanup process is so much easier. Um, it's amazing how I see people go in the kitchens, they cook stuff, and it's a huge mess afterwards. Like, why didn't you just clean up after, as you cook? Uh, it's almost like they had no concept that that was even possible. But, yes, that's what I would highly recommend. I'm going to cut this onion up, and then I'm going to put this in the instant pot so all this can marinate and cook up real nice. Uh, I'm not going to hook it for the full term because I want this to shrink up a little bit so I can then put the rest of the ingredients in. Now, I'm pondering, I'm pondering if I want to put a little bacon in this, in this or I may have bacon as a side option because when I made it last time, it was naturally sweet and I'm not sure how that fatty bacon is going to mix with that sweet uh, cabbage ingredients that I just made here. But, I'm going to go ahead and cook some bacon anyway and put it on the side and we'll see how, how that all turns out. I'll be back with you. All right, peeps, now, bacon finally defrost. I'm going to hit a slice of some of these up and put it in here and, and cook them. And I'm uh, not sure if I'm going to mix it yet, but I might do a side, a, a side version of this with bacon in it and leave the rest by itself because that's a big pot of wood. That's a lot of bacon. So I'm go ahead and cut into this. You know, my family friends, Mr. Freak Food Line. I bet some of you are wondering, why does this guy always go to Food Line? Well, because they're the closest thing to me. Some, you know, maybe I would go somewhere else if something else was closer, but, you know, closest and
quite a few Philly folks there. I don't know. No, it is what it is. cook these bacons and I'm going to do cut up some uh, green peppers next so I'm gonna put a little green peppers in there too you know just make it a little spicy spicy boom boom so I'm about to put this whole cut up this whole green pepper and do what I do best cut it up seeds give me that I need to go plant something feeling all right peeps you know what I'm about to do right in here and uh, let this uh, simmer a little bit longer and go from there. Until next time. All right, until next time. Until the next stage. <laughs> See some peeps. So, this is the cabbage. Now, I only made a video on this. Ooh, almost lost it. Oh, I only made a video on this cabbage because I made some and I put lettuce and some other ingredients in it that I normally don't put in my cabbage. And I've noticed a very, very intense, or more than normal intense flavor of sweetness. And I do know that cabbage or lettuce has a natural sweet taste to it if you eat it, like, uh, you no, know, if you like juice it. Yes. You would never think so, but it does. Mm. This tastes delicious. Now, because I did not fry this cabbage, I did not want to put no bacon in it. So I'm going to try it with a little bit of bacon to see if it tastes any different uh, straight out of the pot. That's nice. The only problem, I would use the, because this is a, because I steamed this, it would take a lot of bacon to put enough bacon in here to make it taste uh, sufficient. Uh, we're talking maybe a couple of packs of bacon, which is probably way too unhealthy. But I was curious. You ever guys ever seen bacon bits? I don't think, hmm, bacon bits really don't taste much like bacon. It kind of sort of. But I was like, what does bacon bits taste like on this cabbage? It tastes nothing like bacon. <laughs> it's crunchy, but 
it couldn't be pay, it couldn't be bacon if you paid it money to imitate bacon, bacon, which you pretty much did. But I'm just curious how many calories this thing has. Thirty calories for something that pretends to taste like bacon that tastes nothing like bacon. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to the real bacon. Because this stuff is absolutely delicious. Now, I will literally see that's nice. That fat from that that fat from that pig with this sweet, almost sweet taste of this cabbage mix mixture. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Unfortunately, I don't think I have four slabs of bacon in the house. <laughs> Because my son keeps eating up all the bacon. Uh, he has this obsession with bacon that he has to eat it all the time. And I literally have to hide the bacon from him because uh, otherwise it, it's gone. So this is what it will look like with bacon in it. But I have to admit, the bacon, and it's semi-crispy, so it's not, uh, crisp, uh, it's not cooked hard. It still makes this cabbage wow it's by it's with itself it's by it's, it's good by itself i'll give it a good eight but you throw the bacon in man it, it skyrockets to like 9.8 it's oh it's something about that pig that just blows my mind he's just so absolutely delicious and the term used everything's good with bacon everything's good with bacon that's not too far from the truth. Wow. Mm. That is nice. That is definitely nice. Um, assuming that he doesn't eat all this, I may have to go go get a, a couple of packs of bacon and just put it in the, in the pot, and it'll just instantly disappear. Cause this is absolutely wow. But. I would not, I would cook the bacon separately. Cause you know, there's nothing worse than some soggy bacon. Mm. Wow. That is good. That is my extra sweet tasting cabbage with a taste of bacon as an option. The bacon almost makes it a, uh, it's the difference between drinking water and what's something else that's really, really good? And your favorite cognac. <laughs> if you guys drink. And if you don't drink, whatever your favorite beverage is. That is the difference between eating the cabbage with and without bacon. It makes a big of a difference. It really does. Wow. Hmm. Okay, family, until next time, I'll see you soon. Cooking with wine. Yeah, baby. <laughs>